Kenyan President uh, William Ruto says he will drop petrol subsidies, setting up Kenyans for possibly higher transportation and production costs. He confirmed this in his inauguration speech, saying the economy cannot sustain consumption subsidies in the coming months, pointing to a policy shift that may see him leave the price of food and fuel uh, by, to be determined by market forces of supply and demand, at least in the near term. Uh, Kenya will be the first country to benefit from an initiative by players in Africa's housing sector seeking to make critical data available to, for developers, financiers and the public. Through the Open Access Initiative, uh, data on the cost of construction, time taken to complete projects and specific challenges arising in the housing sector will be made public uh, across the continent. The initiative, which will cover the continent, is being piloted first in uh, Kenya. Uh, still in Kenya, the port of Mombasa will receive 40 vessels in the next two weeks, signaling continued robust business at the country's largest seaport. Kenya Ports Authority, in its latest cargo movement report released this week, said 23 container ships with assorted loose cargo will be handled during this period. Six car carriers and four oil tankers will also offload motor vehicle units and discharge petroleum products. Joining us uh, from Nairobi to discuss further is Kalia Kiptioni. He's an investment analyst. Uh, Kalia, good uh, afternoon to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I want to take a look at the uh, Energy Petroleum Regulatory Authority's uh, press release. I want to start with the uh, fuel subsidies, where they said, I, mean, I think from effective today, from September the 15th to I think October the 14th, fuel subsidies will be removed. However, they said here, although the subsidy for super petrol has been removed, as subsidies will remain on diesel and kerosene. Um, so, so why the removal of subsidies on petrol, but not diesel and, uh, and kerosene? Um, yeah, thanks for having me, uh, Rattles. Um, there has been no formal communication on why the subsidy was removed on petrol and not on uh, kerosene and diesel. However, the government policy was uh, a sustainable or a progressive removal of subsidies. So my guess is that they started with uh, super petrol, um, then they'll go to the rest. And I think right now we are just left to speculate on why the reason, and there could be a number of reasons. First reason could be maybe they're trying to also take the money away to subsidize fertilizer, um, which is one of the promises that we've given. Or it could be that they feel that people who use super petrol have the capacity to, to purchase the fuel without um, the subsidy. So that's why maybe they prioritize um, removal of subsidy petrol at the others. And uh, what's what's going to be the, the the cost of living impact here with if with uh, with this again starting today up until October the fourteenth? What what do you think that's going to look like? Um, because all prices have gone up uh, either way, um, so there's going to be a tightening. People are going to feel the impact uh, in terms of production. Uh, transport costs are going to go up with the public service vehicles expected also to raise uh, their prices in reaction to that. So cost of living still going to be tight. Uh, however, a positive thing to note is if you notice the landed costs of the fuel actually went down. So if this trend continues, hopefully in the next couple of months into the next year, uh, the fuel prices could actually end up going lower, which would be a good thing for the economy. Yeah, I, I noticed that the EPRA, they, they detailed the landing cost uh, movements month on month. They also detailed the exchange rate movement. Very... Very, very transparent from them. Um, so right, I want to take a look at a quote from Ruto on the cost of living solution, where he says that they want to focus on, I think it's production, yeah? Here, yeah. Uh, no, not this. This is, let's take a look at the next quote, where he, so actually his third, I think it's his third quote, where he says um, something will be done. Yeah, here it is. The cost of living challenges are related mm -hmm. to production. Our strategy to bring down the cost of living is predicated on empowering producers. Our priority intervention, therefore, is to make fertilizer, good quality seeds, and other agricultural inputs affordable and available. Is, is he saying he's going to subsidize those inputs, or what, what do you make of that quote? Yeah, I think that's uh, the policy of his new government at this point. Um, the feeling is that imposing a subsidy on fuel, which is a uh, I could say an output or a consumption, a uh, unit of consumption, is not very helpful to the economy. Instead, they argue that they would rather subsidize uh, units of production, such as, especially in the agriculture space, 
so units of production such as fertilizer that would at the in the long run enable uh, people to produce more uh, crops which in the long run is better for the economy so that's the argument and this has been seen uh, by his announcement in his inaugural integration speech where he said that he's going to immediately um, reduce the price of fertilizer almost by half so that's the shift um, in policy from in, in, having subsidies on consumption items and having them on the production inputs yeah items. Yeah, that, yeah, that inaugura- I think that's where we got that quote from his inauguration speech. He's, he's, he's hitting the ground yeah. running. Um, I want to move to real estate. Um, what do you make of this uh, pilot program for the data hub for um, real estate prices, you know, time, you know construction costs and, and so on and so forth? Um, I think it's a good uh, move in terms of getting a proper view of the real estate space, uh, especially in Kenya, having this data available, uh, it's a good move. However, I think this is likely academic. Most of the large developers tend to have uh, their own research teams and they tend to have this information. Um, so the key issue that remains in the Kenyan real estate space would be easy access to finance and easy access, especially to affordable finance. Um, the rates in Kenya are still pretty high if you're going to get uh, financing for real estate. And number two, um, the construction materials. If the costs also are, with, with the global commodity pricing, prices, how they are playing out, out uh, those prices are still high. So if this hub would be able to help in terms of coming up with cheaper financing and lowering of the construction costs, then I think that would be the net positive output. But it's a good start if i could say okay now I, you know I, i'm assuming that real estate is going to be one of uh, ruto's uh, focuses when he as he as he begins his tenure um and i saw an opinion piece somewhere where it was asked can president ruto deliver on affordable housing uh, in kenya so with what you just said is he where is he focusing he's going to try to focus on um reducing interest rates and access to finance what can he do to provide uh, affordable housing for kenyans um affordable housing it's not a new campaign promise. Um, this was also part of uh, President Uhuru's big four agenda, where affordable housing was key. And I think the goal then was to have 500,000 affordable houses. Right now, in Ruto's promises, he's targeting 250,000, which is still good. But the challenges that were there in terms of executing and getting these houses developed still remain. We haven't seen any solutions. And the government initially tried to participate or involve private sector developers, uh, but the challenges still were there. Already the costs are too high and the government would have to give incentives and play the part, let's say, removal of value-added tax on construction material uh, inputs and such things to be able to allow um, affordable housing to be delivered. We had the Kenya Mortgage Refinancing Company that was set up to be able, and this was targeting buyers to be able to help them get financing, but still the rates that are being offered are still pretty high. So it's still a challenge that they will have to come up with a plus, really good strategy on how to implement it and keep well, what, what What do you make of the potential of Kenya's real estate market? Does it hold a lot of promise for investors? If, assuming they get the rates, you know, however they do it, to get those rates down, and are able to get affordable you know, uh, financing for mortgages and so on and so forth. Does the real estate market in Kenya hold a lot of promise? Uh, the real estate historically uh, has been a market that many Kenyans uh, love. Kenyans have an affinity for tangible assets. So land and real estate is usually the go-to uh, play for, for people. However, the past, I could say the past five years, uh, even slightly longer, the real estate market has not been doing really well. And this is also uh, b- because of how the economy has, be- has been doing. So the real estate market in Kenya traditionally has been very correlated to how the economy is doing. So pre-2015 and uh, below, between 2010 and 2015, the real estate market has been really, really well. So I think if the government is able to have fundamentally a good economy, then the potential of the real estate market will be uh, seen, but at the moment, real estate developers are not 
enjoying it. Those who are able to hack the affordable housing market actually are actually doing well. So this is a strategy that if you're able to get well, then the market will be looking good going forward. Yeah, uh, uh, Kali, you just reminded me of something. Uh, since we're talking about rates in the real estate market, you, and they're very high, I remember Kenyatta at one point tried to cap interest rates on loans. It kind of backfired. It didn't work well for him. Is that, um, is that something Ruto might look at if you're saying that rates have to come down one way or the other? Is a rate cap going to work out? But since it, was so, since it didn't work out so well with, with lending, it, is it something they might not revisit at all? Um, I know. Uh, I don't think the red cap, the red cap, will be revisited because we saw how the banks rea reacted to the red caps. Um, they went heavy into government bonds, which was in high demand, um, and they rationed out uh, credit to the private sector, especially. Actually, what the banks are pushing for is to have free reign on the pricing mechanism. They want it to be. Uh, risk-based pricing so that they, they charge you your interest according to risk to your risk, which would be good in releasing liquidity um, to the market. So I think that's something to be seen. The central bank governor has had a tight control on the banking space since the rate cap was removed. So in as much as the, the rate cap was removed, uh, there still has been an implied uh, rate cap, uh, if I could say, where the banks are not really allowed to really price it however they see fit. So um, this is something that we'll yet to see. The, the uh, President Ruto had mentioned that he would have a meeting with the central bank governor. So we're waiting to see what comes out of, of that, if there will be any significant policy decisions made at that point. Very interesting. It's going to be a really interesting tenure for President Ruto. Um, I want to talk you about the Mombasa port. Uh, the report that was just released looks like businesses or activity is increasing there. How encouraging is that for, for trade? Um, I think it's good for the people of Mombasa. Um, outside of tourism, the port was a big um, economic pillar for Mombasa. And since the SGR came into uh, play and the inland port of Naivasha, uh, that kind of affected uh, trade in Mombasa. So now with clearing and forwarding starting at the port of Mombasa, um, we expect there to be business to resume to levels that there were, uh, say, pre-SGR, um, which is a good thing for them. Do you think this can be maintained, uh, this rate at which we're seeing more cargo coming in, ships docking there, and so on and so forth? Um, I think it can be maintained. Um, of course, the SGR being a government initiative, and one of the biggest infrastructure projects that the, gov that the outgoing government had, um, I think in the long run they'll have to find a balance between the number of items being cleared from Mombasa and what goes all the way to Naivasha. Uh, but looking at the way Kenya's economy is going with a focus with how heavy we're importing stuff, uh, goods, materials, food stuff, everything, I think it's very sustainable um, in the long run that there will be a lot of clearing and forwarding happening. All right. Well, okay, so if we put about a minute ago, we put all this together, cost of living, subsidies, fertilizer, agriculture, real estate, the Mombasa port. What, what's your outlook for Ruto's first four years, how do you think the economy is going to fare uh, going forward? Um, I think from, from the initial things that we're seeing so far, uh, I think it's going to be uh, positive. The moment there's a positive uh, feel in the, in the country, um, I think President Trudeau seems to be focusing heavy on agriculture um, and trade, the, especially traders who are a big block of his voters. So if you're able to help is the pain of doing business in Kenya that's going to help. And the third thing that I think would be very important is having people access uh, capital. This was very uh, prominent during President Kibaki's time. I think banks were looking forward to uh, opening accounts and giving loans, and they were very keen on that. Um, so this is something that to look forward to. However, very quickly, President Ruto mentioned the amount of interest we're paying on domestic debt. debt. So I don't know whether they're going to lower uh, their appetite for domestic debt. If this happens, then banks have to look elsewhere. And this would be a good thing for private enterprises because they'll have to deploy capital in these spaces. So I think they, I, I would say there's some level of optimism in the tenure. All right. Excellent. Thanks for bringing that up on uh, debt servicing on the domestic side. Kalia Kiptioni, uh, Kiptioni joining us from uh, Nairobi Investment Analyst. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.